Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I put together this dress from a Game of Thrones inspired pattern using fabrics that I had in my stash. This is the pattern I'm using. As you can see, it is definitely not Game of Thrones. The first thing I did was establish what size I was going to be. Unfortunately, I span several sizes in this. So what I actually did is looked at the finished garment measurements. Unfortunately, the finished garment measurements only gave me the bust line and not the other parts of the body. This will become relevant later, but for now I looked at how much ease was in the bust and worked out from there what I thought I could get away with in the hips area. I also decided that I was going to make view A with the lovely overlapping front. I cut out all of the relevant sewing pattern pieces and then gave them a quick press with a cool iron. I really recommend doing this, it will make your life so much easier. I then press my fabrics. The contrast fabric I'm using is a synthetic, probably polyester satin with an abstract roses pattern printed in gray and brown. I found this as a two meter remnant length on eBay some time ago absolutely fell in love with it and much later picked up a truly substantial quantity of brown linen in a sale precisely with this pattern in mind. Linen is one of the most used fabrics both in historical costuming and in LARP kit making. For very good reason, it's incredibly breathable, it's easy to work with, it presses beautifully, it also creases. It creases so much and so easily, it's possibly the worst thing in the world. There's no good way around it, you just have to keep ironing it. Or you can accept that you will always look slightly rumpled, which honestly what I normally do. I ordered the amount of fabric that the pattern said I would need, which actually means I have loads left over. Despite that, as always, I am slightly conservative about the way I cut things out. I'll keep everything on the correct grain line, but other than that, I do my best to sneak things in wherever they will fit, which leads to a little bit of trial and error in lining things up on the fabric, so I have the least amount of wastage. With the synthetic, however, I had to be a little bit cleverer because I had a very limited amount of fabric and the border print only ran along one side. After some playing around, I decided I wanted the border print on the sleeves since they're the main focal point of this dress and that the contrast hip gauze would just be plain. That did mean I couldn't cut the sleeve pieces out the way they wanted with the fold at the top and that I'd have to put a seam there instead, but I just left a little bit of extra seam allowance and I had almost exactly the right amount of fabric to have full border print across both sides of both sleeves and then do the hip gauze out of the remaining plain colored fabric. I was actually expecting this dress to be sort of a nightmare to put together, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it was really quite straightforward. The contrast hips weren't difficult to insert at all once I'd marked all the notches on all of the pieces. It was just a case of lining up the contrast hip gores, which I backed in the linen so they'd have more structure, with the upper side front and side back pieces, and then sewing these together. Once I'd clipped those seams and pressed those out, I could sew the side panels onto the front and back pieces, just like I was doing regular princess seams. 
and the whole body of the dress came together really quickly. Then there was the fun and games that was the ties. This dress has six ties or three pairs, all of which are made of bias cut strips of the main fabric, which are sewn into tubes, turned out and then stitched on. This linen was incredibly stiff, which made turning all these tubes the right way out really difficult. We got there in the end, but it was an adventure. I had managed to forget to mark the correct placement of the ties onto the dress pieces, so I just used the pattern as a reference. On one side, the ties line up with the edge, so when I sew the facing in, they'll be trapped between the two layers. On the other side, two of the ties are sewn directly on to the front of the dress. By sewing them down, flipping the tie over and then sewing again so the raw edges are covered. And then the third one actually will go into the side seam. Once they were in, you can attach the front and the back together with a little bit of care to make sure that the contrast top layer of the hip gauze didn't bunch up or do anything weird. The sensible thing to do would have been to baste these layers together, but I was playing chicken with the amount of brown thread that I had and didn't want to waste any on anything that wasn't strictly construction necessary. So what I'm saying here is don't be me. I then sewed together the facing, which threw me a bit to start off with because I didn't realise that the front facing pieces were actually the main body pieces, just with a higher cutting line at about waist height. This is why you should always read your instructions. The facing just goes in around the wrap over fronts and the back of the neck. Later, I would press the edges under and finish them by hand. But to get a nice crisp finish on the outer edge, I did this by machine, clipped the edges and turned it out. And then we were on to the sleeves. The first thing I did while the upper sleeve pieces were still flat was sew in some basting lines across the top of the curve. This is so I can ease the sleeves in to the arm side, which will be smaller than the total length of the top curve of the sleeve piece, which makes it fit your shoulder much better. I have very broad and pointy shoulders for my frame, so properly eased sleeve heads is really essential for me. Each upper sleeve was then sewn to a lower sleeve, that's the huge drapey bit, and the underarm and back seam could be sewn together. In hindsight, I could have been a lot smarter about how I put these together, since the pattern instructions assumed you were putting the contrast on the inside of the hanging sleeve, and what I actually wanted to do was put it on the outside, but, well, you live and learn. I'll know for next time. The back or underarm seam of the contrast sleeve piece could also be sewn together. And once both of those had been pressed, it was time to attach the two together. As is always the way of these things, I had to do a little bit of abstract topology to figure out how exactly I was going to sew them together so that when I flipped it out, the right sides were where I wanted them and the seams were all enclosed. We got there in the end and I sewed the two sleeve pieces together along the bottom edge. I could then flip them out, which would leave the wrist edge of the sleeve raw. This brings us on to the sleeve bands, which are there to neatly finish those edges. They were folded in half and sewn at the top and bottom, flipped out and pressed, and then sewn onto the edge of the sleeve, almost like you're attaching bias binding. 
They'll have to be finished by hand on the inside in just a moment, but that is the main construction pieces of the sleeve done, which means we now get the fun job of fitting them into the arm side. This honestly isn't that bad a job. Once you've eased one sleeve, you've kind of figured out everything there is to know about it. It's time consuming and thankless, but setting in sleeves isn't actually difficult, it's just annoying. And it wouldn't be an ash project without many hours of hand finishing. The sleeve bands had to be turned to the inside and whip stitched down to the lining without catching the outside contrast edge. The hem got levelled as the fact that I never actually bothered to use pins or match notches for princess seams means that my ends end up a little bit wonky. The facing was as invisibly as possible sewn down by hand. The front edge was turned under and whip stitched and then the hem itself was finished with a line of bias binding. And then with the addition of a belt, the whole thing was done. These are so impractical, I love it. Final thoughts on this most ridiculous of possibly one of the silliest things I've ever made. I love it. I love everything about it. I love how light it is and... Okay, I'm not gonna lie. These, these are heavy. If you're not used to having stuff restricting your arm movements, this is going to get real annoying real fast. Having said that, the linen was a really good idea. The synthetic isn't sweaty because it's linen lined. That helps a lot. The role that this plays in the kind of capsule wardrobe, it is a statement piece that is hot weather appropriate, which is rarer than you'd think. I find it's really hard to make an eye-catching costume that's also going to be okay and not boil you to death when it reaches you know 36 degrees so this is kind of amazing it's super lightweight and breathable equally this is going to layer really well over more under things so i could probably make under sleeves i could put a dress or a skirt or trousers under this and it would be fine i guess if i really put my mind to it i could also put a surcoat on top that would be pretty sweet. So it is more versatile than just being a summer piece, but as the headline act of the hottest event of the year, I would recommend. It's surprisingly comfortable, and yet I still feel hella fancy. Things that I would change for future. It's too big. This area fits fine. As you saw, I tapered it out to what I thought was the right measurements for my uh, waist and hips. It's much too big. I could definitely go a size or even two down in the waist and hip area and still be fine. So if you were going to make one of these, I would bear that in mind. Everything from kind of here down is quite loose. I think I could have been smarter in how I put the sleeves together. They worked out fine. I just, I think I could have probably done a cleverer job if I'd thought about it. Anything else I'd change? Oh yeah. If I was really serious about making this like a multi-purpose field event piece of kit, I would take the hem up by about a foot. While in theory this is a cold weather appropriate layering garment, the truth of the matter is I've made it too long for that. You could not wear this to a field event in the pouring rain. You'd die. For those who are not familiar with British field camping events. 
what normally happens is it rains a lot and the week preceding or even during the event itself and then high levels of foot traffic and the fact that our soil is in general moist means that you end up with between six inches and a foot of waterlogged mud that you just steadily sink into. It's not a good time. There's really, there's not a lot you can do about it. You just have to accommodate for that. And that is why field kit comes to below the knee and not any further. Obviously, if you could guarantee a dry event, then this would be fine. And because it is linen and synthetic, you can just chuck it in the washing machine. That will be fine. So in reality, I would be pretty careful about wearing this to a field event. Indoor event, no problem. Every day of the week, especially in high summer. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd run around some woods in this or, you know, sweep dramatically down a staircase, live my full... Game of Thrones. I don't actually, I don't know a lot about Game of Thrones. Watched several seasons of it. Still not sure what was going on. It all just seemed a bit grim and miserable. So I don't know what, like, I don't know what fantasy I'm envisioning wearing this, but whatever it is, I'm here for it. We have got massively off topic. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please feel free to like the video, comment down below and let me know what you're working on at the moment whether you'd make one of these for yourself. And if you'd like to subscribe, I upload sometimes. It's always a party. It'd be great if you could stick around. Down in the description box below, you will find a link to my coffee page where you can make a one-off financial donation to support the channel. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you next time.